Hello, everyone, and welcome again to another Kinemental webinar. Uh, Steve George and Danny Davis here again. Hey, guys. And we're really excited to be with you uh, for another webinar and really hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody's safe. And uh, we're definitely still trying to be as safe as we can. And, and um, we're glad that we can get together and share some more information with you today. Um, just real quick, you know, we've really enjoyed seeing comments that people have left for us, both on Facebook and uh, here in the Click Meeting interface. Um, please, down in the, in the lower right-hand corner, you're going to see a chat window. Feel free to type questions, comments, greetings, whatever. Uh, we'll be kind of paying attention to those as we go through the meeting. So if you've got questions, feel free to ask. Uh, same thing on Facebook. So for those of you watching this on Facebook, uh, feel free to comment. Um, and we have a, a team of people taking a look at those comments. We'll do everything we can to answer those uh, either during the webinar or right after. So uh, we're also trying to start to upload as many of these as we can to YouTube afterwards as well. So yeah, please feel free to, to check those out. Comment there. We'll take it. We'll take a look at that. And uh, you know, if we're doing a good job, uh, give us a give us a like. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thumbs up. And um, you know, we we really appreciate it. So um, today we've got a, a little different topic. We've talked about a lot of tools in the past couple webinars. Mm -hmm. Today we're going to talk about a little different type of tool, and we're going to talk about a software tool called Novo. And uh, as you can see, we've got uh, a guest with us today. We've got our good friend, Jeff Martin. And uh, Jeff, why don't you introduce our set yourself? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jeff Martin um, with Kenamental on the machine tool industry side. I live over in South Carolina and cover the machine tool builder accounts for the Southeast. So looking forward to hopefully answering some of your questions and going through a review of Novo. Great. So Jeff's a friend of ours and we've known him for a long time and, and he uses Novo every day and uh, we thought it would be great to have him um, yeah, be able to walk you through a, a real user's perspective um, and hopefully be able to answer some questions. So to kind of introduce Novo a little bit, we've got a little video we're going to show you first. Right. And uh, Danny, if you don't mind running, that would be great. Yeah, I'll pull that up. This will give us a little bit of a... Um, um, start off information about what Novo is all about. Great. In the past, the proposal and pre-production process was a time spent and spent and spent. To finish the job, you need the right parts. To get those, you have to hit the books. Or you have to search through endless product websites. After you find what you're looking for, the parts may or may not be available or fit together. It's a long, tedious process that drains time, enthusiasm, and money. Kenametal found a better way to accomplish the same process with Novo. Novo is a single source, on-demand performance solution that provides a powerful tooling selector, advisor, and configurator that delivers the best tooling recommendation assembled correctly with CAD graphics and application parameters for the machining operation. Think of it as a harmonious process using digital intelligence to synchronize your workflow from art to part to profit. With Novo, you'll generate your tool lists and tooling packages faster. All tool lists are stored in the cloud, allowing easy sharing between every member of your team. No more isolated solutions or unknown best practices in the process planning department. With the right tools on your machines in the right sequence, you'll execute flawlessly and maximize every shift. In the future, Novo will speed up your process even more with interfaces to CAM and tool management systems. This advanced technology allows users to send, store, and share critical job information on the machining cloud app. Find the best solutions, explore all of your options, and get detailed lists, models, and data of the tools you need. Best of all, the app allows you to collaborate with your clients, sharing machining process and tooling 
anywhere in the world. Novo transforms your workflow, raising efficiency, improving accuracy, and improving performance. The result? More time to focus on the next flawlessly executed job. From art, to part, to profit, Novo is with you every step of the way. If you demand better productivity, download the app. It's free. Novo. Experience powering productivity. That's different thinking. That's Kenametal. All right, awesome. Good, good introduction and way to get started. So I think probably, you know, one of the first questions that people are going to have um, is how can they get Novo, guys? Yeah, we need to talk a little bit about how to download it because there's no sense in explaining it if we can't get uh, everybody to uh, be able to access it. Themselves. Okay. So uh, I think it'd be good if I maybe share my screen, Steve and Jeff, and we'll, we'll show everybody how to access the, the, uh, the software. I think that's a great idea. And uh, while Danny's pulling that up, hello to, again to all of you. I see a lot of people giving us some greetings from all around the world. We've got Mexico and Germany and the U.S., uh, Turkey just joining, and Brazil. And that's, that's awesome. It's really cool that, uh, you know, with this type of platform, we can talk to so many people, India. And uh, we're, we're grateful for you all. So, um, you know, one of, the, one of the things to know as far as getting it, so Danny's showing his his screen here is where would you start out, Danny? So you just want to go to your browser and just type in kinemetal.com, www.kinemetal.com. That will take you to Kinemetal website. And then you go to resources, uh, do the drop down menu. You can see Novo here. Click on Novo. And when that screen pulls up, you'll see a lot of information. You'll actually see the video that we just watched. Uh, so if you guys want to watch that again, you can do that. And then over to the right, you can see here in the, the window, it says download app. Okay. Uh, click on download app, and we can download in um, your PC application, or in the middle here, you have for iPad, for your Apple um, uh, application or uh, devices. And then for your Android devices, we have it over here to the right for, for that application as well. So yep, it's just that easy to uh, download. Just go to www.kinemetal.com and just click to know the, and you'll find it. Pretty that's, easy. That, that's great. And I think having the tablets there is one important thing to point out. You know, a lot of times uh, people may, maybe you don't have um, a PC that's fully connected there on the shop floor, but, you know, whether you're an end user or whether you're, um, you know, an application help or, or sales going back and forth, you know, you could have a tablet, you could have all of that right at your fingertips. Yeah, very mobile. Easily download. So, so first question for Jeff. Uh, Jeff, what's the cost for, for Novo and the cost to use Novo? And Novo is actually, uh, let me go back to the, the screen I was on, sorry about that. Novo is actually a free app and it is cloud-based so that regardless of what platform you load that onto, be it the, uh, the Android, an Apple device, or a Microsoft laptop, it's accessible, those files across any of those platforms, no matter how you log on, because you have unique credentials as you as a user and can access that. Now, does it take a long time to download or is it is it difficult to download or to? Um, That's a good question, Danny. And the neat thing about it is, is the software continues to evolve. Um, it's constantly added to, so the, the software itself is not large on your machine, it's actually in the cloud and accessible via the cloud. So that's that's where those files reside. And matter of fact, um, I'm sharing my screen now with the Novo screen, and we just with one click created a new job. Yep. Can you reshare real quick, Jeff? Yeah. I'm sorry. Thank you. No problem. Share this over. Can you see it now? Is yeah, that great? Thank you, buddy. Okay, great. So let, let me go back a step, actually. I'll go back to the, the job management screen and do this again so that everyone's really familiar and can see how to do this very easily. And, and this is the job I just created, and I'll show you how fast it is to delete it. You just highlight it, click delete. It says, are you sure you want to do that? And I'll say, yes, let's delete that job. Similar to 
a, a laptop computer, you can create folders and subfolders. I've set these up for some of the customers that I call on, which are typically machine tool builders. Our end users that are using Novo could set this up for their customers or their internal departments. And when you do that to create a job, you merely select the folder that you would like the job to be in by highlighting it. So in this case, I'll choose Novo and click new. And it creates a job and assigns a unique number. Now, one so thing- you create a job, you're talking about like, if, if you were in a machine shop and you, and you have a new part that comes in that you need to tool up for that part, that would be considered a job, right? That's what you're saying when you say a job. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a place in the cloud where you have this file stored that will be all the information. And one of the really neat things that we've done well with Novo, and, and just to kind of give you a history of Novo, Danny and Steve, is Novo was launched officially. This is an IMTS year, and on the off IMTS years, we have EMO. So this was officially launched just about seven years ago at EMO and has been around ever since and continues to evolve and improve. So all of the files, the speeds, the feeds, the solid model data, uh, cutting parameters, all of that is stored in one spot, which is the Novo app. And that's the beauty of it. You're not having to jump out of one software and into another. So by clicking new job, we can actually rename this. And typically I would give it a customer's name and then maybe a part number of the customer's part or a description. So for today, I'll just put Novo webinar and put an A behind that. And now you notice over here, another thing that's kind of helpful, and I, and I try to do this on most jobs, I find it helpful when I'm searching through is to have an image typically of a customer's part print or the end uh, part that we're manufacturing. So you can replace this image. And when I do that, I can pull up an image of, of a tool or a part or something along those lines. So in this case, I'll just choose this image and we'll say open. And you notice that image updates to that, that file we selected. That's pretty cool. You may want to drag it down just a little bit, Jeff. I don't know if everybody can see it because sometimes the yeah, okay. video windows, yeah, you know, so everybody can see it and then you can put it back. Okay. Yeah. That's uh that's that's neat. So you can put your part, a visual um, perspective of your part in there so so it's easily to sort easy to sort through and know you're on the right part when you're working. Mm -hmm. That's right, so, Danny. And just like any laptop or any computer application, it, it shows who the author of this job is for whoever is logged in to Novo and it shows a create and a modified date. There are also some neat things that you can do to collaborate with anyone else you'd wanna share this job with, and I can show you how to do that a little bit later. You can put in notes, and when you send files to someone, you will have a job thread here that will be recorded as well. So you've got some information on what you were doing when you go back into a job maybe you haven't looked at in a month or a year or a week. Yeah, okay. that's always good. So is this when you make this you, you know you said jeff that it's going in the cloud is it only accessible on this computer or are you able to get to it regardless if you jump to another computer or or another ipad or some another like operator that? yeah yeah you can go to any machine you, it does require your login credentials though because this information is stored securely on the cloud servers and and not just anyone can have access to this information. It has to be used specifically with a unique username and a unique password. But you could indeed use the same credentials on an iPad, on a different computer, and access that information via the, the file in the cloud, which is really nice. So you could be working on your computer at your desk, and then if you go on the shop floor and happen to have an iPad with you, you could actually pull it up at the machine you can make changes on either either of those devices and it will be one file that's changed so it'll be common across all those platforms danny that's correct so you said you know it's on the on the cloud so how do you save a job like this okay here's the neat thing about this you notice we brought a file in we renamed the file you don't see a save button anywhere on this screen that's because every transaction we do actually reaches out to the cloud. When we search for a tool, 
that data is live and updated. When we look at inventory levels for a specific item, we're going to see actual real warehouse inventories by location. And the beauty of this, Danny, versus, you know, you and I remember, and many of our users out there will look and say, I remember pulling up paper catalogs. And Danny, you know this as well as I do, when you have over 50,000 part numbers across multiple catalogs, we do make mistakes and there are errors. So the day we print that catalog and mail it out to our customers, we it's may okay. find out there's a, 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 an error in the catalog or an additional size that we've added. And that's all captured here in this app because it's very current. It's the most up-to-date information we have. Yeah, I, I remember. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So does, does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. It does. And so, you know, along with that, I guess, Jeff, so you showed the folders a little bit. So your folders basically, and I think you already showed basically a, a good use of that, you know, that you had folders created for, in this case, your different customers that you're off with calling on or different projects. So, you know, let's say an end user, you could have folders based on type of jobs. You could have folders, um, based on a machine, you could have folders based on a area of the plant, um, however you want to set that up, right? That's right. And another thing that's really nice too, within those folders, you can easily do a text search um, by part of the string of the file name, uh, just like any Windows type applications, when you search for it, you can type in contains uh, and, and has part of that text to find that file quickly back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe, you know, do you want to, um, I see there, you know, you've got the notes. So like you said, you know, you can easily share notes to other people. I mean, I always find that that helpful, um, especially if I'm sharing jo jobs with somebody else um, that, uh, that they know what's going on there. Um, and I think, you know, one, one other thing, and, and maybe we, I think we'll highlight this a little bit is that, you know, a couple different ways you can use Novo. This is a little bit more of the detailed way where you're making jobs, saving jobs and easily getting things together for jobs. A little later, we'll get into some of the quick functions of how to just quickly use it in place mm -hmm. of a catalog. Right. That's but, right. You know, kind of starting off in the little bit more detailed view. Uh, you know, one thing that's kind of neat is you've immediately got that work piece material drop down. Right. So could you maybe walk us through that a little little bit, Jeff, of how you would use that to, to go ahead yes, and start to plan this? And, and this is something I think we've done a great job with it, it making it easier. Um, if, if I pull this down right now, it says no preference and there's a drop down here or I can click anywhere within this area and it brings down a drop down. And you'll notice there are different ISO material groups. So the, the standard color codes that apply to those materials, the orange for the super alloys, the Ankenels, the Hastelloys, that type of material, the M for the stainless steels, the 316s, the 304s. Under each of these are also drop downs. And this gives further breakdown of those material groups. Now, this is a little bit, I'll, I'll be totally candid with you up front as a guy who's worked for Kenamel going on 20 years, it's intimidating all these groups and certainly for a customer to navigate and know, for example, a lot of people call 17.4 pH a stainless and maybe would look down here in the stainless group, but in reality, it's a P6 material group. So a much easier way, and most customers can do it this way, if they click on the advanced tab, it used to be that we only had this set up by the different types of standards. For example, Society of Automotive Engineers, American Iron and Steel Institute, these different things, the DIN standard for German. Um, another way to do that, which I find the easiest, and I think most customers will see this as the, the quickest way, is to know what their material already is. For example, if I type in 316, and it lists everything that starts with 316. So if I select 316L, you notice over here, the material group changes to M and the subgroup is M2. And then I could further change this by if that particular material was offered with different hardness ranges, for example, hardened materials, 
if I had a bearing feel like an 8620 that was hardened, that will certainly machine differently than when it's in the gummy soft state. So it's really quick to search these materials, and I'll do a couple just to show you on the fly how easy this is. I can type in 4140 and click 4140. It changes to the P or the steel group of a three. I could go in here and type in part of a trade name like Inconel. And you notice it brings up all of our Inconels. And I can scroll down here. Popular Aerospace Inconel is 718. When we select that, again, it changes the S and S3. So I'm going to go back and put this to 4340 and select that group and apply it. When I say OK, there's a lot going on behind the scenes in Novo that actually filters many of the tools we have. And I'll show you in detail a little bit more when we go to some of the search by specific types of tools, how that applies. But to give you an idea, in steel, you would have an edge prep, be it a hone or a T-land or a combination of both of those. If we were to machine a material such as aluminum, a 6061, a 7075, we would want a much sharper edge prep so that we don't get that build up edge and we have very little tool pressure. We also, by selecting this one material group change up front, apply the correct speeds and feeds and horsepower requirements for those selected tools. So again, Novo having one really good place to have all that information in one spot is, is what's happening here. So, and I also see on there too, we can select our machine as well, correct? We can, and I can show you that briefly, Danny. This is something that is is a uh, being augmented within Novo, and we're not using it to the fullest yet, but an example might be where you would have a, a small, say, 15 horsepower mill. You would not want to misapply and put a 14-inch a, a cutter on that machine. Right. So you can set up different machines, and I've got a few of these in here. Uh, you can see there's some DMGs. I have Mazaks, Akumas. If we select one of these machines, you can pull that in. It brings up an image. You can set things like horsepower value, the torque, uh, the maximum spindle speed. And again, this down the road will be used more so, but it's it's something that we look to add to Novo in the future. Right. I, and I, I see the tool list tab at the top. So maybe... Mm -hmm. We start now about how we want to fill in that tool list. So, you know, we're looking for tools uh, yep. for this particular job that we just entered in. Uh, maybe we talk a little bit about how we can do go through the search methods of finding the tools, proper tools for that. For that sure job. thing, Danny. If, if we start there, you notice we don't have anything because we just right. created this job. So we would go over here to the search button and we have four different ways to search for tools. And what I'd like to do is just go down through the list and cover a little bit of each one of these. Okay. So the first one I think is more traditional, what people are familiar with, and that would be the catalogs. So imagine if you have a catalog for milling, hole making, turning, threading in your systems tools or your holders. And you notice up here, there are numbers under each one of these. Those are how many kinemental tools that we have under those different groups. Wow. So you can see, you know, there's roughly 50,000 tools to choose from. So the objective with Novo is to get you to the best tool quickly and not have to spend a lot of time digging through catalogs to find it. So let's do just a quick example with, uh, with hole making, if we could. I'm gonna look in hole making and we're gonna notice again we had about 13,000 plus choices, and this breaks it down into groups. Over to the left, and I'm gonna move, or to the right rather, I'm gonna move my screen. If you're not able to see these lower ones down here, let me know, Danny. The, the yes. cutting diameter, are you able to see that? Yes, yeah, we can okay, see that. Great. I'm gonna take and ask everyone to take a quick look at the numbers under each of these different types of tools and notice how drastically that will be reduced when we put in a half inch as our search criteria. You now notice we have 41, 51, one, and 10. So in one click, just by adding the, the diameter, we've gotten down a lot closer to what we're looking for. So in this example, I'd like us to consider a hole that is an inch and a half deep. 
So if I look at the whole depth over here, I can add a filter for that as well. And when I click on the inch and a half, we're left with just five choices. And this shows we have two choices as a modular drill and three choices is an indexable tool. So if I look at the modular drill, for example, it shows the depths and it also shows the difference between these two. One is a flange tool like you may use as a stationary tool in a lathe where the material is spinning and the other would be a cylindrical shank. So we'll select the cylindrical shank and you notice we have more information. It brings up the detail about that specific tool. So I'll click on that. We could actually check availability. We could add this directly to an assembly, which I'm going to do. And then you notice, rather than look through a catalog, it actually steers me to the correct insert to choose. So this insert will fit this tool when I select that. And it shows the different types of workpiece materials, maybe uh, for the different grades, we have different geometries like HP, and it gives me a little description, steel long chipping, short chipping, and then we have a flat bottom tool here as well, if the geometry of your tool required that. So it narrows it down to the, to the inserts only for that drill body. So you don't have to worry about looking through hundreds and hundreds of inserts, trying to find what's going to fit. And also eliminates the possibility of a mistake by picking the wrong insert, correct? That's exactly right, Danny. And if you notice here, when we pick this insert, I can add to the assembly. And we now have the drill with the insert. What our next step would be is to be able to have a way to mount that into a particular machine. So I could choose an adapter and put that tool in the adapter. So I'm gonna choose adapter and you notice it brings up all of the different types of spindles that machines may have, be it a BT steep taper, a uh, HSK, or I can also use these filters over here on the back end and look at a list and select it. In this case, I'm going to go down and select KM4X63. And we'll select a hydro first holder. We now have our first tool assembly, and I can come over here and I could actually change this name easily. I'm gonna type in tool one, and you could put in maybe a description, machine area N, item B. Whatever information, just like you normally would as a programmer to have that reference to a specific area of the job. So, and then, so how, you know, you've got the tool. Now, how do you know what speeds and fees to use with this tool? That's a good question, Danny. Um, it's real easy. The speeds and feeds is listed here. It's also in a view over here. If I were in that edit place where we just were, I could pull it up right here. So let's do that. We'll click on the speeds and feeds. And you notice in green, we have starting parameters. So we have a starting cutting speed and a, cut, a starting feed rate. Mm -hmm. You can change this between metric and inch by just toggling. And you also have some detail over here as well. You have more detail about the parameters of the tool, the maximum power that it would draw based on the geometry and the material, and also those feed rates. So if you look here, we have 2.7 horsepower. If we were to increase the feed rate, we would expect that it would require more horsepower. So when I bump this up closer to nine thousandths, you notice our horsepower did go up. Right, and that's great. So I guess one of the things we have to think about for feeds and speeds, right, is if you're choosing an indexable tool or modular tool, the body's not enough, right? You've right. got to have that insert because it's a specific grade, specific edge breadth. So you've, you've got to make sure you've selected your insert and you need to tell it your material. Right. So once you've done all that, then it's it's pretty easy to get speeds and feeds, right? It is. And, and along those lines, speaking of easy, what if you wanted to find out detail about spare parts, screws, clamps for lathe holders, shims, that kind of thing? Mm -hmm. These carrots that are next to each of these tools, we can expand those. And this shows the screw, even shows the wrench that that tool would require 
And the same thing on the Hydroforce tool. We can click that and find out more detail about it, or I can go back after we select it and do the drop down again and see those specific part numbers that would apply. Mm -hmm. Nice. Another neat thing is that you can see a representation of that tool in a 3D view. And you have the ability to move this around and change it. You can zoom in, zoom out, select different views over here if you wanted to. You can even capture that. And let's do that in this case. I'm going to save that image and we'll put it in this machining webinar file and I'll say save. And you notice something up here happened. Um, you may not be able to see it in the upper right, so I'm going to move my screen. There's a yellow number one circled. Right. And it shows that we have downloaded tool one as an image file. Okay. And it tells me that that has successfully been downloaded. So let's try another way to save information about a tool because a lot of times programmers like to have the actual model to check clearances and validate that they can see things on, about that specific tool. So if we go over here, we can download a model as a 3D representation of the current assembly, and you can choose a step file or an STS fi STL file as the format. Another thing that you could do as far as downloads is to create a setup sheet or a two-dimensional drawing for your customer. And we would do that. Oh, I clicked the wrong thing. Let me start that again here. Download the model as a 2D drawing. And then we could either do a monochrome or an ISO style, and you can choose a DXF, a DWG, like an AutoCAD format, or just a PDF format. So again, we'll save this tool one. I'm going to put it in the same directory and say save. And now when we come over to the icon at the top, we see we have another download taking place. Right. And I really like that. You know, I think it makes it easy to collaborate if you've got an idea about machining something a different way, especially, you know, if you're dealing with a clearance problem, you're trying to work around a fixture, you know, you had an idea that night and, you, you know, you don't need a CAD system. You could pull this up, put that together and send it to one of your coworkers and say, hey, you know, what do you think if we had this configuration? You could send them the job. You could send them the drawing, um, send them the STL to throw in your CAM system. Yeah. And, and I can see the, the drawing being sent to the tool crib and the guy setting up the gauge links. I mean, you could actually... Right. You can modify this drawing at the shop. So yes. he gets the drawing. He can he can put notes on there for the guy in the tool crib, set the gauge length of this, um, you know, whatever. You right. Know, or right. what machine it goes to. It's, it's yeah, very... A customer could easy, easily apply their own title block and right. just take the, the information out of here and the part numbers and yeah. drop that right into their own system. So it's, it's really slick. It's nice. I like that. So what are some um, some other ways, Jeff? So we, we did the search here and we started with, we knew that we wanted a drill and, you know, we were kind of looking for a specific diameter and we kind of went in the direction of, of a solution really quickly, right? Because when we get to that size, it's not like we have an infinite number of choices, but what about maybe like a milling example or something like that of, of how we could figure out how to, how to go through and better solve a problem? Sure. So again, we looked at the search and we did the product family. This was just like opening up the catalogs. So another function you can do under search is called the tool advisor. And this is really neat. This is more looking at the part more so than looking at the tool and approaching the features of the part to select the tool for you. So in this case, we'll pick milling. I'm going to pick a shoulder mill and just a straight shoulder. And again, from the job, you noticed it pre-populated our material. So the material speeds and feeds will still apply for that given material. So our depth of the shoulder, when I click here, 
it brings up a visual and it shows the depth, which in most programming cases would be the, the depth in Z on a, uh, on a machining center. So I'm gonna give that a depth of, let's say an inch, a, uh, one in, a half inch deep. And then the next selection will be the width of that shoulder across. So I'm gonna give it just an inch and a half width. Okay. And then we have a lot of other selections down through here. I'm going to scroll down so we can see all of those. We could select the unit of the tool shank, and what that is is inch or metric. I'm going to choose inch in this case. We could tell the software the type of shank. We want cylindrical, a screw-on, screw -on, a shell mill adapter, a taper. I'm not going to restrain the software anymore. And here's the neat thing about this. When I click Continue, Imagine that you're looking for those criteria and the request would be come back with a solution and give me multiple solutions and then prioritize those. So we have three scenarios here. We could use a single tool and then we could use a rough only strategy or maybe we would want two tools. We would have a rough tool and a finish tool. I'm gonna select this middle option and similar to Excel, you have two different tabs over here. So you have a finish tab and you have a rough tab. And when I click on these, you notice there's a 100 next to those. That's telling me there are 100 solutions to what we needed to machine as a component and a part feature. It will truncate that to 100. If there are more choices, it will stop. But it also will lift these and prioritize these from what it deems best to worst, and best would be the fastest way to process that part. So while on the finish tool, it shows this tool number one, I can click the detail and bring up information about that, and we see multiple flutes, we see the type of tool. I could also come over within this field and change things or sort things. For example, the feed rate, the number of the flutes, I'm going to sort this by the number of flutes and pick four. So if this is equal to, and we put in four, and we filter, we only show end mills that have four flutes now. So when I click the information, this shows we have a Harvey 1TE end mill. And it gives me some more specific information about that. So I'm going to select that as my choice, number nine. And I'm going to go over to the rough tool. And again, we have different choices. So you, you two may be wondering why there are flags on some of them and not on others. Yeah. Something you notice as I scroll down through these. Right. Okay. Our aim at Kenamel is to try to make certain we have inventory for those selected countries. So we can verify that this is or is not the case by clicking on that specific tool and then ch clicking check availability. And this looks at our different warehouses. So we don't have inventory in Germany. We do have it in the US and we do not have it in Singapore for this specific tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose that as our selection for tool number three. Okay. And I'm going to add those two tools to this current job. Now, when we do that, you notice it creates a tab over here, features, and it shows that that was a straight shoulder, and it has those tool tools defined as T1 rough and T tool finish. Those also reside in our list of tools and were added below our existing tool one. So we may want to rename these something different. That's easy to do. Again, we can just click rename. We could call this tool to rough mill. And it updates automatically. Same thing with tool three. We could name that, or this tool, we could rename it to tool three. It's also possible to change the sequence. Maybe I would want to move this tool down and have that happen after these other tools are already in place. That's easy to do. You just drag and drop. 
one thing I'd like to point out to everybody that you can't break the software. Um, you know, there's really nothing you're going to do to hurt anything. So I would encourage people to try different things. That's how you learn. And uh, it's pretty intuitive. You try it. If you do run into questions, we have videos online. You can also call our, our CAS group, and they are certainly willing to help walk you through some of these scenarios. So we've got two ways to hold a tool. One thing we didn't do, though, when we created this mill and this end mill, we don't have an arbor or an adapter for that. So I'm going to walk through very briefly how you would add those. Unlike previously looking through, finding the diameter of the cutter body and then having to correlate that to the tool, Nova already knows that. So it is filtering and only showing us diameters of the front end of that tool that apply to that cutter. Nice. So the back end can be filtered. And again, if we go with a KM63, KM4X63, we could choose that. And you notice we have two different options here as well. We could look and see this one has a different weight. So when we apply that tool, it would actually be a different look than the first tool we selected. Well, that's coming up, Jeff. Just a quick question. Um, for, for back ends, for the adapters, do we mm -hmm. have non metal adapters available as well? Uh, this, when you say non metal, do you mean a different ISO standard type tool? Uh, something like Capto maybe or... Okay, yes. Let me show you what, what that would be. The ISO standard uh, for Capto would be PSC or Polygon System. And yes, we could change that by simply going back and then select that type of tool adapter. So as I scroll down through here, I can find that right here. Here's a PSC 50 and I could select that and add that to the assembly. Okay, great. We have HSK, uh, CV, BT, lots of different styles. So yes, there are, are certainly other styles that can be added. So, so now, we, we, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to ask, you know, now that you've got some of this together, um, can you get some sort of report or something showing you all the tools that you have for that Absolutely. job? Absolutely. When we create a list, and I've had lists that have been over 70 tools, and I've seen some with, with different customers the same way. So you want to share that information, and there's multiple ways to do that. Um, I could send this information in an email to someone like Danny Davis um, and type in his name here or add an email for anyone that we might know. So if I typed in Danny Davis, I could put a note in here, say update list on Thursday or whatever you want to tell him. And I click that, that automatically sends that information to Danny. I could also download this in a printable report as an Excel file or a PDF. So I'll do a PDF in this first case. And you notice up here again, I'll move the screen so we can see it. In the upper right, we have that download taking place where it's creating that report. And it shouldn't take long. And when that completes, we'll open that file up and show you what it looks like, Steve. Okay. So I think after we get that pulled up, uh, I'd like to, if it's okay with you guys, jump in and talk a little bit about some of the quick search features in Novo, because um, I think that's something that really could help a lot of people learn, right. to, especially get their feet wet of, of learning to use this really quickly. Yeah, while that's downloading, matter of fact, we can go through that now and, and come back and see that download um, after it's finished. If it's not finished right now, nope, we'll give it just a minute. So okay. in the search box, we covered by a product family with the advisor. The quick search is really simple. Um, you can know part of a part number. You can know our seven digit material master code number, or you can even type in text. For example, call it. If 
I type in call it, it'll bring up every tool that contains that word. You notice there's call it, there's call it chucks. Um, I can type in synchro for our synchronous check, chuck. And if I spell it right, that helps even more. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and this is, uh, try SY in there, Jeff. Yeah, yeah. SY, there we go. So the, you know, and this is really like one of my favorite features. I, I you know, I, I use this um, all the time because, you know, kind of to replace that catalog of how to, how to quickly look something up. And, and this was actually be a great example. You know, I talk to people a lot about tapping and, you know, uh, what's a good tap chuck to use, trying to find a, a synchronous tapping chuck. Well, that's, that's an easy way to find it. Um, right there. So, so I, I like that example, but yeah, you know, if you were looking for a core five, you can type core five and start to see the list, um, or material master, or material master number. Yeah. So I, I want to throw Jeff, I want to throw you a little curve here, buddy. So All right. well, you've known us long enough that, that hopefully you won't kill us for doing this, but I, I went and dug out a package of inserts from one of my guys toolboxes. So let's say I find this this package of inserts, and I want to know what these things are for, and more information about it. So, you know, on the back here, here's a label, and I'm just going to give you. I'm going to call out this material master number and see what you can tell me about it. So the okay. material master number is three five five six three three one. Okay, that was a little quicker than looking in the catalog, and it's yeah. a good like insert. Like the inserts in the box. Yeah. Okay. And this is our insert, so I can add that to a new one assembly, and we could actually, knowing just the insert, we could actually see what cutters that insert fits into. Okay. So That's you notice these different numbers. We've got 20, 21, 6. And they're different types of cutters. They're not all the same cutter. I know the shanks are different, but this is a 75 degree lead high feed cutter. This is a 45 degree roughing cutter. So these are different cutters as well. Okay. So let's say, you know, I know that in, in my case, just, you know, what we've got set up right now and running, that most likely it was one of the high feed cutters. So let's just guess. Okay that the team was using it for a 75 degree. Yeah, let's let's take that one there. Okay, and there's there's even a 15 degree. And the difference, of course, being is is the depth of cut capability for each of these. So if you have a 75 degree high feed, we select that and it, it lists the different diameters. Yeah, let's take and a four inch, maybe. You want to go with a four inch? Okay. Yeah. So we add that to the assembly. And then again, we can we can verify this on our viewer by clicking, and it shows okay. that cutter. And speeds and fades for that? Can we get speeds that? Speeds and fades are, are real easy too because we do have an actual insert in the cutter. It can apply speeds and feeds because it knows the grade and the edge prep for the insert. So we just click speeds and feeds, and it brings up that dialog box. Right. Awesome. And it gives us the recommendation. Now, your depth of cut, maybe you don't take an 87,000 step on your high feed cutter because you're you're looking at your horsepower and you're getting concerned you only have a 10 horsepower machine. Mm -hmm. Maybe we back that down to 60 thousandths. And when we do that, power of the tool is still more than we needed. So maybe we even bring it down more. And we can just play around with these scenarios to get what we actually need. So now I'm down below 10 horsepower. So... You know, you can play with speeds and feeds, radial engagement, depth of cut to tailor and maximize the tool to your machine, which I think is really neat to see this as a live dynamic chart. I, I really, really like that. So that's probably for a lot of people, maybe the quickest way to get speeds and feeds if you know your actual part. Or if you want to know, let's say you want to know what a Harvey 1TE can do or um you know, HPX drill, something like that. Put it in the quick search, find the tool you're looking for, go in there. You can get speeds and feeds, pick your material, 
um, and really quickly get that information. Um, so, so I think it's nice, you know, if, you, if, if you've got the time and you're really building, let's say, things for your company or things for your customer that you're going to keep together and share, you've got all the organization um, of the job manager. But at the same time, you know, when you just, man, how, how fast do I run this thing? Uh, it's pretty neat that that quick search gets you to that information so quickly. So it sounds like a lot of people can take the catalogs they have on their desk and start cleaning some of that stuff out now. A absolutely, absolutely. You know, so I, I think, and, and one of the things that, you know, we'll emphasize again before we sign off is that, you know, with these videos, uh, obviously this thing is, is on, on Facebook live, so you can watch it uh, even if you're in the click meeting now. Uh, you can go to the Kenna Metal Facebook page and see it. Um, we'll take clips out of this and put them on social media, probably the whole thing on YouTube. Take this video later, download Novo, get it set up, and go run some of these examples. Just yeah. do it quickly side by side, get used to it, um, and I think this will help you a lot with, with yeah, training. Play around with it, and, and uh, if you do have a, an issue or something you don't understand, you know, we'll be monitoring the Facebook page for a while. And uh, you know, any questions that come up, we'll try to we'll try to answer them for you. Right. We'll get we'll get the experts to will help you. Absolutely. You know, one so. thing I'll, I'll point out real quick too is, and this doesn't happen often, but sometimes it does. A component a customer has may have multiple materials. So even though we default to the material when we're in the speeds and feeds for that whole part, maybe there's a component of it that is not that material. Maybe it's not forty three. 40 all the way across, maybe parts of it are low carbon. Um, we could change that on the fly as well. And that will also update the speeds and feeds specific to that material. So just something to be aware of. It's really easy to make changes. And that's the beauty of having the file in the cloud is you can share that back and forth and make different iterations and different changes to it. Yeah, that's awesome. So maybe let's just finish the thought real quick. We're coming to the to the close of our webinar. So the last thing that was there under search, Jeff, we'll just briefly mention it. Um, you had one final category of searching by industry. And I think this is really kind of intended to give you some ideas, right, of different tools that would be used in different types of industries. And maybe you can go in and pull some things out as you need them. Yeah, so for example, in this case, aerospace, we break it up by materials of those components. And then we have more common components that are in industry. So maybe, you know, you've got a turbine blade or something along those lines. If we open this up, it will actually pre-populate a list of tools that are common to those components. So you notice right here, a ceramic end mill, you have a, a shell mill up here, you have some tapered end mills. The neat thing is it's really quick. If I wanted to say, let's grab this tapered end mill as well as the ceramic mill, we could add those to another job as well. We could say copy two, and then instead of the current job, I could look at another job like the one we just did create. So when I come over here, we select the Novo job and say confirm. Then when we go back to the Novo job, you notice the tools that we already had, as well as these two that we just selected are in that job. That's so great. It's really easy to do things and share information. Um, you could even share a single tool versus a whole job by just clicking that one tool and saying, send a copy to, and I can send that to Danny Davis again. And it's, it's that quick to do that. That's good. And that's probably also a way for, you know, machinists that are learning can go in and play around with some different ideas in there, see types of tools that are that are often used and, yeah. and have some kind of idea of relative speeds and feeds. So, you know, guys, I, I think this has been a really good first first step into Novo. All right. Um, we've um, yeah haven't had a lot of questions, but we're, again, paying attention to that as we go along. I think people um, want to play around with it. Maybe yeah. ask more questions later. Definitely. That's where we would suggest you'd start, right, is if you don't already have it, download it. Once you've got it, um, go through and watch a little bit of this again. Try some of these examples. 
go find you a, a box of tools like we did. Uh, look them up and um, see how quickly you can start to navigate. So just quickly, as far as, um, you know, getting help. So again, if you, if you leave some comments on Facebook, uh, we'll be looking at those definitely and trying to answer those. Um, you know, also uh, feel free to contact our tech support team. So our CAS team, um, they will help you with Novo. You can also find a link to that help uh, directly in Novo. Um, and I just kind of wanted to mention future topics. So this was part one of Novo. So we're going to do another part of this in two weeks where we go into a little bit more detail of some of the advanced functions. So hope you'll join us for that. And um, we're continuing to plan out more future webinars. So we've had some ideas start to come in, especially from social media. Uh, if you've got more ideas for us of things that you'd like to know about, please leave it on Facebook send us a comment somewhere and we will see what we can do to get that set up. Um, also, um, just want to mention a few people have asked, um, obviously everybody that's in the main webinar here was able to find it, but for those of you on Facebook and other places, uh, totally fine to watch it from Facebook. If you want to go into the webinar itself uh, and you're not sure how to do that, look on the Kenna Metal uh, mainkennametal.com page. Uh, if you go to About Us, um, and you can actually find under events uh, a list of webinars. So when we have uh, an idea for another webinar, it will show up there, and you can register uh, if you want to get into the Click Meeting version. Um, yeah, and again, we appreciate your your support. We appreciate your comments. Uh, really means a lot to us to let us know that we're doing a good job. Don't forget, it's free, absolutely free. Yes, yes, it's, <laughs> it's free. So download today. Yeah, you know, and and keep in mind too things like you know if you've got you know in your shop, um, you know again you can use it on a PC, you can use it on a tablet, uh, you know you can pick up a, a cheap tablet just to have out knocking around the shop right. for somebody to quickly use and reference to is always a good idea that that we see some people doing so. You know, so with that, you know, we'd like to, to thank everybody for attending. We'd like to thank our buddy Jeff for, for yeah, being on with us today. You did a great job. And uh, thanks for letting us uh, put you on the spot a little bit. And uh, we enjoyed it. Hopefully, hopefully you did as well. And uh, so until next time, yeah, stay safe and we'll see you soon. See you guys. Yeah. Bye.